Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, Happy New Year! For the first review 2022, we review the latest addition to one of the most beloved franchises of the FPS subgenre. Does the actor's ability scores live up to the accolade? Let's find out! Epic Games is Unreal Tournament is probably one of the most recognizable, famous franchises in the first person shooter genre. The original entry in the series started in 1999, along with Ed Software's Quake 3 Arena, revolutionized traditional arena based shooters. Even today, the original Unreal Tournament is still being supported, patched, and still being played online. As I've said in my previous review of this particular game, I remember playing it in the computing labs in the last day of school of 2004. You know exactly what's happened before the summer vacation ended. In 2002, the spiritual successor to the original Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament 2003, was released. This game was also ported to the original Xbox under the name Unreal Championship. It was originally developed to showcase how the game's engine Unreal Engine 2 can be used for the development of games specifically designed for consoles. Also, to showcase Microsoft's new multiplayer gaming service at the time, Xbox Live. In that very year, 2004, Epic Games took the groundwork that was Unreal Tournament 2003 and added a plethora of new maps, modes, and mechanics, and then released it as a standalone game. Unreal Tournament 2004 was born. The community hailed this particular game as the pinnacle of the franchise and also one of the most played games on my Steam library. I have been playing this game for roughly 364 hours in total. The last stop of the Unreal Tournament franchise is of course Unreal Tournament 3. This game's launch was a very strange one. It was originally announced on May 5th 2005 originally called Unreal Tournament 2007, slated for a 2006 release. However, Epic delayed the launch to the second half of 2007. The PC version was released on November 19, 2007. The port for the PlayStation 3 was released on December 11, 2007. However, the game had to be ported from scratch for the Xbox 360. The reason why is both PC and the PlayStation 3 versions was running on an open network. This means that the community can make maps, mods, characters, even game types, and port these community made creations into the game itself. The PlayStation 3 needed to be physically imported into the console itself using a USB thumb drive which could be shared with friends or other players online. Xbox Live at the time did not support third party mods. Epic had to, to delay the release for the third time, give the developers extra time to build the game around the Xbox Live network. The Xbox 360 version was released on July the 30th, 2008. Unlike the other games of the franchise, the plot was not focused around the Grand Championship, and the few teams featured in this game were not actively participating in the Grand Championship during the game's plot. In this game, humans who were reincarnated by a process known as Necris, pioneered by Fado Corporation, carry out in an attack on the Twin Souls colony in an unknown planet. You play as James Reaper Hawkins, one of the survivors of the attack, turned mercenary with the Ronin division of the Izanagi Corporation. It is up to you to battle your way through the game's twisted arenas to find out what really happened to your colony. The accessibility scores are as follows. Right, to kick off proceedings, visibility give it 7.5. This game has no colorblind support. To make matters worse, the team colours in both the campaign and multiplayer matches are red and blue. You know as well as I do, red and blue are not exactly the worst colour contrast when it comes to colourblind players. It still needs addressing nonetheless. On ability, give it 6.5. And in the counts to playing this game with a hearing impairment, there are a few major issues here. To this game's advantage, there is a subtitles function available in the options menu. However, there's a major catch to this. These subtitles are only present in cutscenes. To make matters worse, 
Mission briefings before the match is played in campaign mode are not displayed. Also, the standard radio chatter that the bots use does not appear in the game's chat windows. This includes enemy flag carriers here and the red pace. You can see how the lack of the features implementation mid-match can put that hearing impaired player at a marked disadvantage, especially in a highly competitive environment, for example, a first person shooter game. Next up, mobility is scored a 10.5. Let's get this set the way Epic seems to have tailored this game with mobility impaired players in mind. It is very hard to criticize this game in terms of this category. In the PC version's case, there is gamepad support available, but there is no way to customize the stick layout. However, if you'd rather to stick to your trusty keyboard and mouse, you can fully customize the controls via the options menu. The console versions are no exemption. Regardless of the PS3 or Xbox 360 versions, the game has interchangeable control layouts. As you can probably tell, both button and stick layouts can be changed to suit your impairments. Also, as I have said earlier in this category, this game is extremely accessible for a player with a mobility impairment. Last but certainly not least, gameplay scored a sky high 11. Well, it seems though that Epic Games still has their charm while developing this game. Yes, as I have said earlier on in the review, the game has been delayed twice. Well, three times if you cut the Xbox 360 version. The game has infinite replayability as mod support is available for both the PS3 and PC versions. However, modding the PC version is somewhat complex. Trust me guys, I've tried it. However, the PS3 version is probably the easiest version to mod. Just copy the mod to a specific folder on your USB device, plug the USB drive into your PS3, and the game should do the rest. The in-game mod manager allows you to enable and disable particular mods to give you the experience you want. The Xbox 360 version on the other hand has absolutely no mod support whatsoever due to the closed nature of the Xbox Live Network when the Xbox 360 was at its prime. However, the game is extremely enjoyable nonetheless. The Xbox 360 version contained the Titan Pack add-on. This add-on contained additional maps and characters exclusive to the Xbox 360. Later on down the line, the Titan Pack was released for the PS3 and PC versions. The Xbox 360's version still has a hell of a lot of lifespan. The campaign is very long. It can be played in court for up to three players. Uh, however, as part for the course of the series, it's the multiplayer is where the game really shines through. The multiplayer is an absolute blast to play with your friends or other players online. However, the multiplayer servers on the Xbox 360 seems to be very dormant. No one seems to be playing that. Even though the game itself is backwards compatible on your Xbox One and Xbox Series S or X. However, you can still play multiplayer matches versus bots via the game that's in action mode. The PC version has still has a fair few servers running thanks to a community effort to keep them online. In summary, Unreal Tournament 3 is probably the best first person shooter game on the Xbox 360 generation. Even though the game has a timeless feel to it, the gameplay itself is very similar to the game that the Xbox 360 hardware on the map, Gears of War. This really showed the world how Unreal Engine 3 was purposely built for the Xbox and the PlayStation 3 consoles. As I have said earlier in the review, the game is backwards compatible on your Xbox One or Xbox Series S or X consoles. This game is currently under a tenner on the Microsoft Store. If you're a Gears of War fan and is looking for a relatively cheap first person shooter, I seriously cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is a pretty good 88.75%. See you guys in the next review. Spartan Commander 1998. Roll out Spartan Legion and Happy New Year. Capture an unlinked node.